This week's video is really exciting. Um, we finally get to put the Laos laser board inside the laser cutter. Um, there's a few questions we need to answer before we begin. begin. Um, those are here. We need to know whether there are pull-ups on the engrave or um, what I'm calling the protect input on the power supply. Um, also we need to know if the engrave button on the front panel is normally open or normally closed. Uh, we also need to know um, the laser control pin, does that have a pull up is, in the button on the front panel, is it normally open or normally closed? Uh, I would like to know what the control voltage is for the laser power because um, later when I add PWM it would be good to know what the maximum voltage that I will allow and the PWM channel. And then um, finally, is there a pull up on the laser power pin, the analog input? So we're going to answer those questions as many as we can without powering the laser power supply on at all. I'm hoping to answer the pull up question just by unplugging the, the Phoenix connectors, those guys there and measuring the um, the resistance to 5 volts on each of those pins and if I you know get something like 1k to 5 volts on each of those pins and there's a possibility of there being a pull up um, I'll answer it definitively by um, unplugging the test button and the laser control wire from the Moshi board and turning the enabling the um, the power supply using the protect input and if the laser fires then there isn't a pull up or the pull up isn't you know strong enough or whatever because I'm almost certain that the laser power is or the on off control is active low um, also I'm going to unplug this connector this is the one by the way this is all powered off or unplugged this is the one that I'm going to be using as the first pass sole uh, header to go to the new control board because on this um, connector there's 24 volts ground 5 volts and then laser on so these first three will go directly to the power input connector on the Laos board and then this will go <coughs> to the laser control output on the Laos board. That's AC in so we're not going to do anything with that plus the um, laser con current return and then these are basically limited to the front panel. There's ground, <coughs> the protect input or the engrave button, laser on, which goes to the test button, ground again, laser power which is the analog input and 5 volts. So I'm going to leave that one alone for the time being. Um, the long cable I talked about for the I squared C display goes from, that's the front panel, it follows along this cable down to here along the front and then here it makes a right angle and goes to the control board so I'm just gonna follow that exact path and this is the spot laser button and I'm actually gonna get rid of all of the spot laser stuff so I'm gonna use this um, it's not a split loom but I'm gonna use this plastic cover and I'm gonna reuse the cable run um, so I'm also, I think I mentioned that I'm going to get rid of the, sp the spot laser in the earlier video. And that's there. It doesn't really provide that great or unique a function. And so it's just weight on the head that slows the head down during engraving. And it's also got this floppy cable that when the head, you know, is cruising around just gets in the way of stuff. So I'm just going to get rid of that, pull it out of this crease. And then that lets me use the 5 volt output that had been 
going over there. So I'm going to use that 5 volts to control the new louse board. So, all right. So we've got it all unplugged, um, even the AC power, as you can see. So we're going to be measuring um, resistance between 5 volts and um, the engraved button and the laser on. So we can use this 5 volts here and then laser on is the third from the left. So that's 700 kilo ohms. That's not a great sign. How about the engrave button? It's 800 kilo ohms. The two 5 volts are shorted together or very nearly so. And these two grounds are shorted together and chassis ground is shorted. Okay, well we've learned that it doesn't look like there are at least simple pull-ups on those. The resistance seems to be awfully high for that to be the case. So let's find out if these switches are um, you know, normally open or normally closed. So I'm going to put it on tone mode. We're going to go between ground and engrave. Okay. So that's just a simple switch. Now we're going to go between laser on and test. Okay, actually test uses a different ground. Okay, that's just a regular switch. So uh, it seems to me that in principle, if we use an open open uh, collector driver, we should be able to turn the laser on. Um, so let's test between this laser on. There's two, right? So there's this laser on that goes to the control board, and there's this laser on. Yep. So those are shorted. So either we're getting our five our uh, pull up from the Moshi board down here or or there um, is some other way they're doing the detection for laser on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the laser on pin out of this Phoenix connector so it won't be getting um, any kind of a signal at all from the control board or if it is uh, getting a pull up from the control board it won't be able to. So I'm just going to unscrew that, pull it out, and I'm going to use a zip tie to prevent it from shorting out with anything. Okay, so this is the connector we're using for the control board. And remember we've got laser uh, 5 volts that goes to the laser, the spot laser now, but we'll remove that uh, ground in 24 volts. So I'm going to plug this one back in. Okay, and then we're going to plug in the, the harness for the front panel and the harness for AC and the laser. Okay, so now uh, what we'll do is turn the laser on and then I'm not going to touch anything in here at all. I don't want to experience what that is like. Uh, so I'm going to turn the laser on, I'm going to shut this, and then we're going to see if enabling the laser through the engrave button causes the laser to fire. If it does, then we have to use a push-pull driver for the laser on, and it will be sort of sketchy when the controller boots up. But if I can turn the engrave button on and I have to press the test button, then I know that it's producing its own 5-volt pull-up. Oh, i got to plug it back in. Well, just 
just for fun, <laughs> I'm going to unplug the motors. There we go. I have a feeling that was related to plugging. Uh, it's possible I plugged in the um, end switches wrong. Okay. So now, um, theoretically, just the laser is enabled. There's no motors, and the control board is kind of out of the loop. So if I press the test button, or if I do the uh, protection enable, and the laser doesn't fire, then we're okay. Okay, the laser doesn't fire. Now if I do the test button, the laser fires. Great, so we know that um, with the laser input, on-off input, if it's open circuit, the laser will not turn on, and that's great news. Okay, so that's that answers the question about um, engrave. We know that engrave is open circuit when this is open and the laser doesn't fire. We know that the laser it seems like it has some kind of a pull-up, but it's uh, normally open, so when we push that button it's closed. We don't know about the laser power voltage yet. We're going to measure that very carefully right now. And we still, we think there's a pull-up. It's likely there is one. Okay, so we just have to measure this voltage, write it down, and then we're going to ditch the Moshi board. <clears throat> we know that chassis ground is the same as digital ground. So the way I'm going to try to keep myself safer on this is I'm going to attach the multimeter to chassis ground with the clip and I'm only going to use one hand to measure laser voltage. So I'm going to go get the clip and be right back. Okay, the ground lead of the multimeter is hooked up to the laser current return and that's hardwired directly to ground. So I'm not going to touch that lead anymore, and I'm going to use one hand. And I'm going to touch the second from the right. This one's 5 volts. So there's 5 volts. And this one is 0.624 volts. That will be our maximum voltage for PWM later on. So unfortunately, the holes from the old controller, the Moshi board controller, don't match the hole pattern on the last board. So I had to cut out this acrylic adapter plate on the scroll saw. And I have clearance holes where the Moshi board um, holes were, and then I uh, drilled and tapped holes into the acrylic to screw in the um, the louse board. And the important thing to to know with the, the drilling and tapping is that it would be really really hard to get on the underside and put the nuts on. So drilling and tapping makes that really easy. So I'm going to install this into there, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, we've got the uh, louse board installed. There's a couple of things that I wish I had taken into account when I made that um, plexiglass adapter. The USB extension, I had to trim off some of the plastic overmolding to make it fit. And even still, that, that wire's at a pretty, you know, extreme angle. Um, I think it'll probably be okay though. And then the Ethernet port, you know, is the same. And I had to notch out back there on the the uh, acrylic because it ends up right. Oh come on! It ends up right at the level of that hole. So hopefully that's the last acrylic I ever have to cut with the scroll saw. Cause that was just miserable. Okay, so there's the board. Um, it's physically mounted. It's uh, quite secure. I'm happy with that. Um, it's still got the 
testing program on there. And uh, this is the harness that goes to the motors and the end stops. I need to reorder, these are the end stops. I had to pull them out of their JST housing and I need to put them in a new configuration to match what the allow board needs. And then these are the uh, X and Y motors. So these motors, they just attach to those JS bottom JSTs over there. And then the end stops go right there. Um, I finished making a new, this is the new harness that goes from that part of the power supply. And then it plugs in, oh come on. Well that's another fail. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to unscrew most of the screws of the louse board to screw in my um, Phoenix. And even still, that's not, you know, it'll work, but that kind of sucks. Probably when I get the laser cutter working, um, I'll laser myself a new acrylic backer board. Because this one's got some uh, Rev1 problems. Um, and then this wire that split out uh, is the laser, and it will go to laser on right there when it's time for that. But for now, it's not, it's intentionally not connected to anything because we got to do the testing without the laser. Okay, so we've got the power hooked up. We can see blue is on the left there, black in the middle, yellow on the end. So on this side, we can see yellow is hooked 24 volts, black is ground, 5 volts is blue, and then laser is that other black. So we'll use the continuity um, to make sure that the laser there is in fact the wire that we've tucked away and not hooked up to anything yet. I rearranged the JST for the um, end stops to match the order that they're in on the louse board. And I've plugged in two of the stepper motors to the X and Y channel there. I don't actually know if they're in the right order. When I load up the test program, I'll be able to find out. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug the Pololus and the embed. And I'm gonna turn on the main power supply and I'm gonna measure a few voltages just to make sure that it's actually 24 and five. I've got one spare Pololu and three spare octocouplers and I don't care about the CAN controller. So if, if it fries as long as those four things are out, then that's not the end of the world. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out and then we'll turn it on.